free. Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hello, uh, and thank you all for coming uh, to the third in a three-part series that we've been doing here in Northboro. Um, my name is Arthur Bergeron at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, this presentation has been, is being offered in conjunction with folks from the Alzheimer's Association, and Julie McMurray from the Alzheimer's Association is here, and Bay Path Elder Services, which you, many of you may know is the regional so-called the Aging Services Access Point, the ASAP for this whole area. They are the the, the, the nonprofit who work with the state um, and through which most federal and state dollars for elders flow. So they are people, one of the goals of these presentations is to get you to know the players and they're a really important player. You want to be friends with the folks from Bay Path Elder Services. <laughs> um, so in the earlier, this is the third of a three part series, in the earlier presentations in the first one we talked about um, uh, thinking about Alzheimer's if you don't have it or don't know anyone who's have, but you're kind of concerned, you want to make sure that you've prepared your, your assets for it, you want to know, and we always talked about support for the Alzheimer's Association, because in the long run, by the time that I'm there, I would like to hope that there are ways of reducing my chances of getting dementia, even though we have Alzheimer's in my family. My mother died in a nursing home. One of my siblings just got an early stage diagnosis. I'm fortunately the youngest, so you know we've got a few more years. So I think we're, many of us are hoping that. Uh, in the second presentation, we really talked about um, kind of spotting early stages of dementia and trying to, and trying to find out whether it, this is simply old age or whether this is really dementia coming from Alzheimer's disease, from Lewy body dementia, from any of the series, of the set of things, of diseases that can cause dementia, which is broadly a set of symptoms, not a disease. So in this presentation, we're really talking about uh, dealing with somebody who may have later stage dementia, um, and what are the possibilities? And we're going to talk about my friends Frank and Mary. I had introduced them in my previous presentations. Frank and Mary and their daughter Mary Jr. Uh, they really have three children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., but we're not going to talk much about Peter and Paul. They are, one of them is a lawyer. He lives in New York. One of them is a high-tech guy. He lives in San Diego. But Mary is the kind of designated daughter who has been trying to help Frank and Mary. Um, to deal with any issues that they might have. Um, their goal, Mar Frank and Mary's goal in life is they want to live in their house until they die and then they want to be buried in the backyard and when one dies they'd like to leave everything to the other and after that they'd like to have everything divided among the three children. Maybe that sounds familiar. Um, but Mary right now has got dementia and it's getting more serious and so they're trying to figure out what to do. Um, there are three possible places where Mary can be kind of living out her life. There really used to be only one in this situation. It was the nursing home. That was what was the case in my mother's case. You got to a certain point, there really were no programs or even any, any staff or any age, anybody to kind of help you unless you had a big family and you could kind of put meme in the corner, you know, which is what happened with my grandmother many years ago and, and kind of the relatives would take care of her. But uh, there, except for that, there really wasn't anything. So now there really are two alternatives. One is home which is really many people's goal, is I never want to leave home, right? And we're going to talk about that, and one is assisted living, but a specific kind of uh, a unit in an assisted living facility, a memory care unit, of something that is really designed to deal, to help people and work with people who have got these later stages of dementia. We're going to talk about all of that later on. First, we're going to go through the basics, though. I mean, if, you're st if you have exhausted all the alternatives and you're stuck going to a nursing home, we're just going to talk about this briefly, what happens? So in this situation, there are Frank and Mary's assets. They've got a house worth $300,000 that they own jointly. He has a, an IRA worth two hundred. dollars They have joint savings worth three hundred. dollars They have total assets of $800,000. Um, Frank has income of $2,250 per month, $1,500 from Social Security and $750 from a pension. Mary has $750 or half of Frank's amount in Social Security only. If Mary goes to a nursing home, this is a quick quiz, how many think, people think that before they can she can qualify for MassHealth, 
which is the Massachusetts name for Medicaid, which is the one government program that will pay for nursing home care, that before she can qualify, they're going to have to spend down a lot of money. How many people think that's true? Ah, you haven't been to these before. So you're all wrong. So in this situation, if Mary needs nursing home care, she can qualify for it almost immediately without their having to spend down funds on the nursing home if they want to. Before we get to how, this is just a quick thing that you have to know throughout this presentation. The activities of daily living, or the ADLs. And you think to yourself, well, that's everything. Activities of daily living is everything I do. Well, these, these are special. Dressing, eating, toileting, bathing, transferring. If you need physical assistance with at least two of those, or if you don't, but you need constant supervision for your own health, then you are medically eligible for nursing home care in the Commonwealth and a bunch of other things also happen, and we're going to keep referring to that later on. So if Mary has to go to a nursing home, what Frank has to do in that situation uh, is simple. Mary, has, Mary, in order to qualify for Mass Health, has to have less than $2,000 in countable assets. Frank, however, can own the home as long as it has an equity of less than $814,000. He can have cash or cash equivalent assets in addition to that up to $117,240. Don't ask me where these numbers come from. They come from the sky. These are all federal, state regulations. They change regularly, but that's today's numbers. And he can have infinite income, infinite income as the spouse at home. So if Mary were in a nursing home and needed to qualify for Mass Health, Mary could shift all of her assets to Frank, um, thereby making, giving her less than $2,000. Frank could then buy an annuity in order to cause his remaining money to be less than $117,240. An annuity is a contract between somebody, typically in an insurance company. You pay them money, and they agree to pay you back money over a term, in monthly payments over a term. Uh, as long as the purchase of the annuity by Frank is for a term that is shorter than his actuarial life expectancy, and if he were 80 years old, say, his life expectancy would be about eight years or seven years, as long as the purchase of that annuity were for a term shorter than that, then the purchase of that annuity in any size uh, is a legitimate conversion from a countable asset to non-countable income. So as long as we shift all the assets to Frank and then Frank buys an annuity, Mary can immediately qualify for mass health unless Frank dies. Because remember, their current plan is if one dies, everything goes to the other. Well, if Frank dies right now, everything goes to Mary, right? They hold their assets jointly. Um, and then she's got way too much in assets, so she has a problem. Now, the way that you remedy that if you're Frank is you simply change your will. You change your will to say that instead of things going, assets going to Mary, because that's what his will says, you say everything is going to go in trust for Mary's benefit. You can name Mary Jr. or Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. or any combination or anybody as the trustees. As long as, as his will is, is set, is states that, and as long as all assets have been shifted to Frank before he dies, then upon his death, all the assets are immediately safe. So Mary can qualify while he's alive, and if he dies, Mary can continue to be qualified. So that's nursing homes in a nutshell. But what if he really doesn't want to go to a nursing home? We're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but first, the two things that Frank wants to do if, if Mary is in the nursing home are one, he wants to visit regularly, which he wanted to do anyway, but he wants to visit at odd times, not always the regular time, so that the nursing home is not, oh, it's so nice to see you again. You know, it's your time. Um, I will guarantee you that if you visit at odd times, the chances are much better that Mary will always be taken care of very well, because you never know when someone's going to come and visit. The other thing you want to do is you want to know the Alzheimer's Association. The Alzheimer's Association does more for folks with Alzheimer's hence their name, than anyone. Not only in terms of having a 24-hour hotline, in terms of providing you with contacts to local folks that, that can provide services to Mary, right? But also in terms of dealing with these, the disease in the longer run, funding the research. I'm a big fan of the Alzheimer's <laughs> Association. Julie McMurray would like to talk to you a little bit about that. She's been here before talking about early stage issues and stuff, but she's really going to be talking tonight about the role of the Alzheimer's Association in Mary's situation. Julie. 